How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video on my 2007 GT500. So, finally got back from some stuff and I'm a little later in the video I'll explain what's going on, but for right now this is going to be part one of the transmission rebuild in the car. This is a project I wanted to do for a long time, decided it's finally time to do it. So I'll explain a little bit later some additional things I want to talk about, but let's go ahead and get into it. So behind me is my 2007 GT500. It has a pretty long history of going down the track, going fairly decent and over time wear and tear and everything like that now the reason we're going to do a rebuild on this transmission is my synchros are getting pretty bad um, it could be clutch related it has an rxt clutch in it has been in there for several years now uh, it could be throw up bearing and some other stuff but while i have the whole thing out i decided i want to do this and the reason is in 2007 and later um, all the way up until more recent they've been coming out with transmission upgrades for the TR6060. So this is the first year that it was out to my understanding and good transmission, holds a ton of power, but it has some shortcomings and we'll get to those in a minute. And one of them is the synchros, one particular shortcoming, and we're gonna go ahead and do some upgrades. So this car, if you guys are wondering, it does have a Barton short throw shifter, not the greatest in the world, but it does all right. Um, solid clutch line, clutch, uh, basically all little mini upgrades you'd want it to do along the way. I put a shea brace in there a while ago for the transmission doesn't really help with anything so i'm probably gonna take that off and go back to stock and um, i think that's everything but until then i've been enjoying the car and like i said we'll get to that in a bit so let's go over the upgrades so while i was gone i started stockpiling some parts got a couple of rock auto things got a couple of kits and i'll kind of go into everything so there's a youtube video of a guy doing a rebuild on a tr6060 out of a camaro so we'll go ahead and get to that and that's going to be the primary video that i'm following he's not the Greatest videographer in the world, but he did capture all the specs and everything I need to worry about in terms of how to do this. So the only thing I'm missing, I'm missing a few parts still. I need to get a bearing for, um, I think it's the input shaft bearing. Uh, it gets destroyed upon removal. I need to get that. A couple of tools I'm going to need in addition to what I have here is the a bearing puller. I'll grab that at Harbor Freight or something. I do have a press right over there. So if we do need that to get anything off, we'll use that as well. Um, not a super easy project and this is what he used for 90 percent of the pulling is this 10 or uh it's a puller so it's a this is a 250 fifty dollar tool for the knockoff version and the more expensive one's closer to 500 bucks but it is a 10 ton uh i think it's a 12 or 14 piece bearing puller set and these all allow you to stack so you can get all the way down the input shaft and output shaft and unstack all the gears as you do that rebuild you'll see in the later future so absolutely critical to have this so i picked up one off amazon for about 250 and i guess this is mine now forever so i'm gonna use that i have uh, think about it i forgot about this sorry guys this i used a long time ago to do the output shaft seal this is a tool used for uh removing the output shaft flange the later models have a style flange that slides in it doesn't need a separate piece. The earlier model TR6060s have something like this. I think 1314 GT500s have the other style where it's a uh, it's a yoke instead of a flange. Um, generic set of, uh, I think these are just um, locking ring pliers. So as opposed to locking ring, this is a different style. We'll see what I'm talking about. The heads are a little bit different and they allow to pull apart certain rings. And then that brings us to a couple of rock auto parts. Got a new pilot bearing, got ourselves a new throw out bearing. If the clutch looks bad, or I'm probably gonna send it off anyway back to Trem or uh, back to McLeod for a rebuild. Costs about 650 bucks for a rebuild, not including shipping. And while you're in there, gonna do a new throw out bearing. Um, this is an input shaft seal for the trans. I don't know if I'll need it. It looks like they may have included it here. I think that's a new output and input shaft seal based on the sizes. I'm gonna actually open that up real quick. So I may not need this at all. Yeah, so slightly different style. I'm gonna go with this one that looks more OAM than what uh, than this one. So leave that back there. And then, like I said, this is the pilot bearing. We'll replace that while we're in there, might as well. And then that brings us to the actual kit, the meat and potatoes. So not very much, but this sucker is about 450 bucks. Um, I might be off, it might be close to 600. It's somewhere in that range. But this comes from Texas Drive Speed and Performance or Texas where could it come from? Yeah, Texas Driveline Performance. So what this is is new synchronizers and new, so they're stage two. So it comes with a couple of brass pieces. 
Um, or yeah, I want to say they're brass. Uh, so these are the shift fork sliders. We have one through four labeled and then five, six in reverse. So the current plastic ones are what comes stock. And I don't know if they're known to crack, but we'll find out when we pull it apart, how they look. And I figure, I mean, the car is pretty old at this point, it's 2007. So I'm sure anything plastic in there is getting worn out. I think this might be the source of some of my shifter slop. Uh, this is the this little cup where the the pit, the uh, the shifter linkage drops into to actually pivot inside of the transmission as you're moving stuff around. So suspect that that might be something that needs to get replaced. Regardless, we're going to do a bronze one, take out some of the slop, and then we have our actual synchros. So looking at the part numbers, I was curious. It looks like these top four are all the same, which should be first, second, third, and fourth. And then we have fifth, sixth, and reverse. So the order doesn't really matter. And based on these, these are gear ratios, a 0.89 and a 67.5, I want to say. Could be wrong with that, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But these are all the same. Oh, yeah, 2C, 3C. So I guess two of these, never mind, as I was. So two of these are different. So 11859, 11859, 11858, 858. 11861, 11861. So if you Google these part numbers, which I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I get all these going to the right spot. So I'm not gonna unpackage them, but a synchronizer is three separate pieces. These are the upgraded hybrid or hibernation or whatever. Uh, they're called a hybrid synchro. So on the inside, I don't know if you can tell how that's kind of dark. So the outside is what they should look like, where you can see it's kind of it acts like a uh, it acts like a mini clutch or a brake pad. So that's what it should look like. And I guarantee when they come out of mine, that's going to be perfectly shiny. No more um, viscous material to stop it. And then on the inside, the carbon hybrid, you know, the inside is more of a, uh, I don't know if it's carbon fiber, but there's basically it's dark in there. So they have a different style of material in there. And what happens is when the gears mesh together, it will essentially apply a lot more clamping and braking force. Really, it's braking force as you slide it together and stop the gears from rotating first to second, allow it to synchronize, and then allow the shift to slide, or the shift fork to slide from one to the next gear a lot smoother. But what I think is happening, and I'm not getting the grind, but what I think is happening on my trans, when I go ahead and pull the gear, the synchronizer is not slowing down very quickly, and I have to wait for it to slow down before it'll let me into the next gear, and it's causing some very long one-two shifts. So that is more or less the plan. I figure if we're gonna go in here, might as well upgrade them all. So. That's what we got. Looking at these, they all seem to have that carbon hybrid synchro. And from my understanding, from my research, could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure, basically these are what come in the C7 Corvettes. So same TR6060, slightly different case changes, but uh, internally everything is compatible and these are the upgraded pieces. So that's pretty much that. So like I said, pretty happy with that. I've been extremely busy, so I don't know how much time or how long this project's gonna take me. Should get it done in a reasonable amount of time, I'd hope. I went ahead and got back from the work trip. I'll show you the car as I pulled it out of the garage real quick. It was absolutely filthy and sounds pretty good though. I've been driving the car around, went ahead and took it for a ride later that day. It was when I got back from that. Got a couple pictures here and there. I've been driving the wife around and just kind of enjoying the car as a street car for a little bit. I want to see how everything feels, really get an idea of where I'm at. So all in all, very happy with you know how the car is operating and everything. And between the transmission and the intercooler side, I do want to do some upgrades there. But one thing at a time, looking at my IATs and data logs and everything, going down the track, ice tank isn't, I think, the most efficient system right now. It really needs some help with a better pump. Uh, line upgrades, you can go down a whole rabbit hole. Uh, but the real part that it's suffering, I think, is on my short track and uh, transmission stuff. So, if this is something I wanted to kind of do for a long time, I think it's due for it. 
Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and knock it out one thing at a time. So I don't know how soon it's gonna be until I get the next video out in terms of doing transmission stuff, but I wanted to make part one and kind of explain where I'm at with everything. So we got most of the parts we need. Um, as we need more stuff, we'll go ahead and pick up a few more things along the way, so I'm sure there'll be more stuff. But this is supposed to be my walkthrough video on how I'm doing it. And similar to the cams, I'm not a professional. This is just me following another YouTuber, and I'm also going to see if I can pull the manual and a couple other things and see how good we can get. So it should be a fun adventure. I think I'll be all right, and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So thanks for watching, guys. Feel free to like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.